Hello everyone, today we are taking a look at two whoops, as the thumbnail should have indicated, the F-65 and the F-75 from Fractal Engineering. And some of you are very, very intimate and may even be able to contribute to this review. Kind of a community review. So if you have been flying the Fractal Frames or the Bind and Flies as I have here, leave your comments down below so others who might be interested, they'll have more than just one experience to reference. Thank you. So I think there's two things that we have to kind of initially kind of talk about before we get into the text and the specs and all the flight and stuff like that. So these aren't uh, traditional whoops. Uh, you can see they're supported by carbon fiber frames and their stance is more wide than it is long. Traditional, our tiny whoops are very uh, true X, we tend to call them. So the measurement from motor to motor is the same all the way around. But you can see here that in this particular case, the distance between the motors uh, front to back is shorter than it is side to side. And I think that contributes to the stability. Another thing that probably contributes to how these fly and the stability is Quicksilver. Quicksilver is much like Betaflight. It's flight controller firmware. Uh, it's different in that it is boiled down to, well, this is my opinion, not from the Quicksilver folks. Uh, it's boiled down to what you really need from most pilots versus having all these features. So uh, if you're interested in trying out some alternate firmware, it operates much like Betaflight does. They have a web config that you can go to or you can download the uh, standalone uh, configurator. Uh, onto your desktop PC, or I think it supports Linux and Mac and all those things, and you want to try out some uh, different uh, flight controller firmware, give Quicksilver a, a try. Also, they do have an open collective page, so if you would like to help them contribute to the community as they already have, uh, they do accept uh, donations over there on the open collective. So I would encourage you, if you enjoy Quicksilver, or if you just want to help a community, a small community, uh, make micro flying a lot more enjoyable or better, Check it out. I'll have a link down in the video description to the Quicksilver uh, website as well as the Quicksilver Open Collective page. Also, Fractal Engineering will be linked down below. And that should bring us to the next point is you don't have to go directly to Fractal Engineering to buy these. You do for the bind and flies, but you can find the uh, frames at various websites and I'll put a laundry list. I asked him uh, where all his frames are and I think there's maybe even some possibilities that uh, there's more than the list that he sent me. So I'll link those all down below. Uh, to where you can buy uh, the Fractal Engineering products from. Um, but if you want the Bind and Fly, you got to go directly to him. Also, I've got a code, just Nick Burns, and that will get you 10% off on the Fractal Engineering web shop. So you can save 10% during this time of year as we get closer to tax season here in the U.S. Let's get down to the desk. We'll cover uh, as he builds them, and that's kind of the way I want, like to go when it comes to someone who designs their own, is I want to know what parts they use, and I want to fly it as they intended, rather than my own take on it. Okay, the first thing we need to cover, it comes with stickers. One sheet of a uh, non-fungible slap sheet as it's printed right here. First edition, this is print number 406 out of 420. Woohoo! They also come in boxes about like this. Inside you'll find information about your particular build as well as your spare parts. And of course a fractal engineering sticker as well. Let's cover the F-65 first. Uh, ignore the props. It didn't come with these props but I've been testing those new HQ props so they come with the Gemfan Biblade props, the 31 millimeters. The motors are Happy Model 0802, 25,000 kV. You can select different motors on the website, so you don't have to get the 25,000 kV motors. If you go with BT20, it is a 499 upcharge. This build has the Diamond F4 board on it, and it is uh, ELRS as well. Camera is the Runcam Nano 3. Of course, we have ducts, carbon fiber. And that carbon fiber is 1.5 millimeters thick. And our battery tray mounting is with 3D prints, which keeps it nice and light. The F-65 weighs 19.24 grams. And now for the F-75. Again, we have a Happy Model 0802, but this time they're 22,000 kV motors. On 40 millimeter gem fan props. Oops, from a Mobula 7. Custom carbon fiber, 1.5 millimeters thick. And our battery tray is made out of the same prints. You can get these in different colors. I believe it's clear and blue are the two options. Why didn't I get blue? Eh, clear is all right. And the F-75 weighs 21 and a half grams. I flew it on these Weebleed FPV batteries. Of course, this one in the F-65 and this one in the F-75. Link in the video description if you're interested in these. I think these are sold out. These batteries perform very, very, very well. We'll take off here in a minute, but my biggest barrier to this review is my inability to say fractal very often. 
<laughs> so you may hear that uh, tongue slip up and say flactal. I don't know why that seems to be my natural way of pronouncing fractal, so not to offend uh, Mr. Fractal or any of you who might be listening. Uh, it's Fractal Engineering is the name of the shop, and it's Fractal F75 or Fractal 75 or F65 or Fractal 65. Uh, so we are starting off with the F75, which is my preferred uh, size. I just like that size, the efficiency, the power, uh, the aggressive flight that we're able to get out of it. If you're looking at whoops and you like to fly them outside, I would definitely recommend the 75 millimeter version with 40 millimeter props. Just flies so much longer and better outside. But if you just like that cute 65 millimeter package, yeah. Fractal's got you covered there as well. We got the F65. Uh, of course, my cube gate out there in the basement. That is Weebleed FPV. That's the big one. I think that's the 20 plus incher. They have a 19 incher, which uh, you should probably investigate. Again, I'll I'll put a link down to Weebleed FPV and the batteries, and you should be able to find the gate um, from that link. Or I'll put two links. What have you, uh, if you're interested in that. He has other gates as well. I just really like the cube. And then I have those uh, lightsaber lights. Those are the singular stand-up. And also some mobility gates. Or they're not actually gates. I didn't bring my mobility gates out. Those are the stand-up lights that you see around the table down there. Uh, so Quicksilver, while it's different from Betaflight, I think they've... It's been around a long time, so anybody who's not familiar, you should know that this is not some new fly-by-night thing. This is a group of very knowledgeable, hardworking, experienced FPV pilots that saw a need for different firmware, and I think it might even be micro-centric, so I should probably be using it much more frequently than I have been. But it flies... <laughs> oh, I'm going to catch some heat. In my experience with these two whoops, if I compare it to all my other whoops, including those that I just custom built, I think it tracks better. So it, it just you just point it in the direction you want to go, and it goes. And it has less flight deficiencies that you have to learn to overcome through either throttle management or in your line of attack. Uh, I just think Quicksilver, in my experience with these two quads, and yeah, I flew Quicksilver here many years ago, but uh, kind of lost track of it for a while, but... Uh, Quicksilver might be something that you want to give a try if you're not pleased with how your Whoop flies. Um, but in this particular case, some of the magic is the fact that these have a wider stance than they do traditionally with a traditional Tiny Whoop. Also, if you're uh, interested in, in Tiny Whoop racing, uh, you probably want to check with your local chapter to make sure uh, this sort of form factor is allowed for uh, Whoop racing, whether it you know allows carbon fiber um, or if it has any sort of limitations as far as the dimensions of the motor post to motor post, uh, something to consider. Uh, obviously, we've got three minutes of uh, relatively aggressive flying with those Weebleed FPV and BT20 connectors on this little guy. Uh, a lot of good fun. I enjoyed myself. Actually, been flying it more. As I showed you in the uh, intro on the F65, I put on some test props. Uh, I've also been testing these quite a bit inside with the HD0 goggles. I did have a little bit of an issue initially setting up the Express LRS and getting that consistent. Um, I'm not certain what my barrier was, but how I got past the uh, binding and its saving bind was just to use a binding phrase. I've got a binding phrase on everything. All I had to do was uh, input that binding phrase into the GUI and save it. So now it binds up every time that I uh, turn the quad and the radio on. That was really my only barrier uh, when it came to setting up the quad was that binding phrase. Of course, there's a little bit of a learning curve. If you're very intimate with Betaflight or you've set up more than a few quads on Betaflight, you may look at it and go, oh, this is so much different and hard. But really, in my opinion, what they've done is they've boiled it down to what you need versus having a flight controller firmware that can do a whole bunch of different things that you might not need and therefore you get lost in where things are or how things work uh, this is uh, much more boiled down also they have templates uh, so if you want to uh, try a template out much like beta flights presets those are available on the uh, quicksilver website as well when you go through the web-based config uh, that's the end of our f-75 flight four minutes and 27 seconds and our battery is at 3.5 volts. Perfect! All right, let's move on to the F65. All right, F65 flight time. I kind of like that initial when you arm and it flashes armed, armed, armed. In my head, I have that sound. Almost like, uh, you know, a weapon's been launched or something like that. Armed, armed, armed. Anyways, I'm being silly, but it, that's, that's what happened to me every time I flew these things. I would hear that little voice in my head. 
Uh, so this is the F65. It's going to be more friendly for smaller indoor spaces. Uh, I have heard many, many times. How about, you know, to, in order to fly inside, you have to have a big space. And I think, unfortunately, if you're not familiar with some other top pilots like Daniel Daylight or Rab or something like that, I know specifically Daniel Daylight. He has set up little tiny courses inside of his bedroom. Like, he'll hang a gate from a bedpost and he'll have a cube on the floor. Of course, he's a top-end pilot, but what that shows us is that you don't have to have a big space. Yes, our house is fairly large. We live in the Midwest. It's pretty cheap real estate here. I really can't complain about that. Um, we've done a bunch of remodel to the house over the years. We've been here for 17 years now, I think, 16 years, something like that. Um, so yeah, our house is well laid out. Uh, I should cover video reception. Uh, I fly Race Band 8, um, mainly because Race Band 8 gets up above Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi can interfere with our video transmission, so that's always one of the basic tips that I give. Also, construction matters. We have a little bit of an open design with traditional drywall and wood studs. If you have concrete or metal in your walls, um, that's generally commercial construction, but you never know. Uh, your reception may be far less than what I'm getting in mine. Uh, so I think what it comes down to, probably the, the most unique whoop flying experience outside of anything HD, because that is very unique as well, Fractal 75, Fractal 65, these are the ones I would point you to if you're looking for something different, or if you're someone who wants to get started and you just want to start off with a whoop that's probably not going to break, um, these are handmade, so you have to spend a little bit more of your hard-earned dollars if you want to buy a fly. But if you want to build your own, you can buy uh, the fractal frames and you can buy the individual components and build it yourself, which uh, will get you a little bit different quad than this. But with that carbon fiber support and those whoop ducks, I, you know, I bash this thing around. Yeah, these flights don't show crashes, but I bash this thing around and. Whoops don't generally break all that much, and if they do, you just buy another whoop frame that costs you four dollars or something like that. You cut the ducks off, and then you take the screws out of the motor. They all go right together, real simply and easily. So something that was impressive also about this was this is probably the most aggressive flying 65 millimeter tiny whoop I've flown as well. I really felt like I could go faster than I traditionally did. So take that for what it's worth. That's a feeling. But it's not, uh, I don't have like a, a speed gun. Of course, if you fly outside, it probably doesn't matter. Oh, but for flying inside, I did feel like on 65 millimeters, this was probably one of my faster, more aggressive flights, especially for this length of time as I had that one crash. You know me, uh, if I get much past 2 minutes and 30 seconds, it's not unusual for me to have at least one crash around that 2.30 marker or before the end of the flight at the very least. And I run the battery almost completely flat. I chose this because I kind of forgot about the low battery warning and I couldn't even clear the couch. Uh, so probably should have ended 15 seconds sooner. Uh, so let's say three minutes on our flight time without killing our batteries. So the main thing I wanted to cover at the desk is the, well, the the camera angle is adjustable. Let me get one of these out. Sorry, I forgot to be prepared for this segment. Also have a personal note, which I will not be sharing. So we have these different notches, so we can use those different notches in order to adjust our camera angle. So it's not as easy as if we had a screw, but we have the notches in the print, and you can adjust your camera angle via that. Now, I didn't try to press mine way up to get extra speed. I basically flew it at about the camera angle that it was, and then I adjusted my vision in the goggles top and bottom uh, for my speed. Uh, oftentimes, I very much have an advocate of adjustable camera angle. In this case, we have it. It's just not as easy as it might be with a screw. Of course, it's something that you want to potentially have uh, different prints set for different camera angles, so maybe you swap those out. Um, I have not done that, so I'm not exactly sure how easy of an operation that is. Also, I talked about replacing the ducts. All that's holding on the ducts is the same thing it's holding on the motors. Three screws. That's it. I think the other potential break point is the fact that we don't have a nut down here below our board. So we've got these three uh, screws that mount our board. Of course, you might have a fourth if you use a different board in your build, and it just screws down into the fiber, carbon fiber, excuse me. And so if we do have a bunch of crashes that are really severe, there's potential, albeit probably very limited potential, and many of you out there that have been flying these can can uh, chime in with your uh, damage reports or lack of damage reports. We don't have a nut down there. 
So that means that it could maybe ream out the carbon over time and that the screw becomes loose. Then at some point the screw either comes out or gets so loose that the board uh, isn't stable within its mounting. That's really the only thing I see that might be a deficiency. You know, when he built these, he turned, I believe this is uh, upside down, right? Because doesn't the USB port point down by nature? I might be wrong on that. It's been a while since I've used the diamond board myself. Uh, many people have used this diamond board and had troubles with it. So my suggestion is uh, just understand that it, it has been problematic for some people. I'm not going to report that it has been problematic for a widespread. You know how things go. Sometimes the people who have problems are the noisiest people when it comes to online. And those people that have been perfectly satisfied and well served by them are quiet. But just know that this board, especially recently, has gotten some um, negative reports. Although if you're buying a bind and fly, you already get it tested directly from Mr. Fractal himself. So there shouldn't be any concerns there. But it might be something if you're building yours, you might want to choose something different. Maybe you want to go with an F12 or excuse me, the X12 board, which I haven't heard. Boy, I don't think I've heard any negative reports about that board. Uh, and if I have, they've been really, really minor or just kind of questions. Um, but there are host boards that you could uh, use. You don't have to use this. The diamond board is just lighter than the others because of its, its nature of design. Without the connectors, you've got to solder motor wires, which top-notch soldering, too. By the way, holy catfish. Really nice job soldering on these two. I, I really appreciate that. That's, uh, that's better than I do. So, bravo. But this gives you the lightest configuration, if that's what you're shooting for. That's really it. Two quality whoops from a guy who takes a lot of care, designed his own carbon fiber frame, saw, had a vision, made it come true, and has now been selling. And they've been selling a lot because I had tried to get my hands on these for quite a while. Now, of course, I could have, you know, bought a frame kit and build them out, but my preference is always to go with what the designer envisions. That way I can bring it to you and show it as the designer, well, at least the best of my abilities, show it as the designer intended. Again, I've got a coupon code down in the video description. It's just Nick Burns. You can get 10% off the Fractal store. Uh, these uh, components, as far as the, the Fractal uh, components, the frame, the whoops, and other things that Fractal has engineered are available on various websites. I'll have a full link down below. Look for your favorite shop. Uh, I don't think any of them will be affiliate links, so you don't have to worry about that if that's a sticking point for you. Uh, just look for your favorite shop and buy stuff where you like. And don't forget, if you've got a fractal frame or a fractal bind and fly, leave your comments down below so you can contribute to this review with additional thoughts, contradictory thoughts, more positive thoughts, However you like, I don't delete comments unless you curse, so keep it clean and we'll be all okay. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in that comment section below. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.